So uh, hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to this presentation on interactive, efficient, and creative image generation using compositional pattern producing networks. My name is Alvin Estelan Ekavan, and I'm a former student at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Trondheim, Norway. And I currently work as a software engineer at Capra Consulting in Oslo. Uh, my co-author, who is also present here today, uh, is Bjorn Gambek. He is a professor of language technology at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology and a senior advisor at RISE, the Research Institutes of Sweden. Here's a brief agenda for today's presentation. I'll start off with some motivation behind the paper. Then I'll give a primer on some of the architectural components that we are using in our paper. Some of the audience may not be familiar with some of these, so I think uh, a quick primer can be beneficial here. Next, I'll talk about the architecture that we introduced in our paper, namely information maximizing and pattern producing generative adversarial network, or IMPGAN for short. Following this is a summary of the main experiments and their results. And after this, I'll give an overview and live demonstration of the interactive system that we have developed in connection with, uh, with our paper. And finally, I'll briefly summarize the key takeaways from today's presentation, followed by some questions if we have time for that. The motivation behind the paper is threefold. Uh, first, we wanted to explore a less researched approach to image, image uh, synth synthesis. Second, we wanted to devise a flexible neural network architecture that both generalizes well across many different data sets, but also automatically learns meaningful semantic labels um, from the training data, thereby removing the requirement of using labeled uh, training sets. And third, we wanted to facilitate creative exploration of the resulting models that we train. Modern image synthesis uh, is usually, um, usually revolves around generative models trained through, through backpropagation. Um, and these models are typically implemented as neural networks. There are two main approaches that are widely used to train these uh, types of models, and uh, that's generative adversarial networks and variational autoencoders. Uh, most of these approaches generate an entire image at once. And if you want to generate high resolution images, uh, let's say 1000 by 1000 pixels, then that typically also requires that you have training data uh, of an equal high resolution. And those kinds of data sets are not always readily available. Modern approaches are typically also memory intensive, especially for generating high resolution images. So both training and inference using these models require a certain baseline of hardware once you um, want to generate high resolution images. But there's another approach to image generation that exists. And this approach allows us to generate each pixel of an image independently. It exhibits novel visual properties. It can generate images at arbitrary resolutions. So this means that you can train the model on low resolution images and afterwards generate images at arbitrary resolutions. So in other words, the approach is not constrained by the res resolution of the training data that you are using. It also allows for arbitrarily zooming in and out on a generated image. So I'll have, have examples of, of all of this uh, later on. I'll now present uh, a very short primer on generative adversarial networks, which is what we are using in our paper to train our model. This is a framework that was introduced by Ian Goodfellow in 2014 for training generative models. And it revolves around pitting a discriminator network up against a generator network in what was, uh, in the original paper at least, uh, a minimax game. So you have these two types of networks that are competing against each other. The generator is tasked with generating samples that are similar to the ones in the training data. And the discriminator's task is to identify if any given sample is real and comes from the training data, or if it's fake and has been generated by the generator. Uh, 
The generator has uh, a latent vector Z containing random noise that it takes as input, and it learns to map this, uh, this noise into samples, for example, images. And the networks are optimized with regards to opposing goals, and they are trained using backpropagation. Compositional Pattern Producing Network, or CPPN for short. This is a type of architecture that originated in the field of evolutionary computation. In our paper and in this presentation, we are only focusing on how this architecture can be used for image generation. So in this context, the most important aspect of this architecture is that it takes a, a single coordinate as input, passes that into a neural network, and this uh, network outputs a pixel intensity or an RGB color if you have a color image. Uh, for that specific input coordinate. So in this way, it generates independent pixels instead of entire images. There are two additional inputs that can be beneficial to, to add to a CPPN when it comes to image generation. Uh, you have a scalar R, often called a distance term, which introduces a bias towards symmetry in the generated images. So this uh, scalar, um, is actually the Euclidean distance from a given coordinate and the origin of the image. So this, this gives us uh, a bias towards symmetry in images. And an additional input is the latent vector Z, um, which allows for a variation of the generated images. If you were only using the um, uh, XY coordinates as input, and you were using a fixed neural network architecture, you would only be able to generate a single, uh, a single image. But uh, when you introduce this kind of uh, random noise uh, through this latent vector, you can have variation in the, the images that you generate. Uh, there are many factors that influence the visual properties of uh, a, an image generated by a CPPN. The main factors are the choice of activation functions. Uh, so which activation functions that you are using within your neural network. The network architecture itself, how deep it is, uh, how many layers, how large the hidden layers are, etc. The weight initialization scheme. So if you uh, initialize the neural network with large or small weights. The absolute size of the inputs to the network and also the inclusion or exclusion of the distance term as an input. The high level steps for generating an n by n image using a CPPN is one, keep the latent input fixed, two, generate n squared independent pixels using a CPPN. So you could generate each pixel sequentially because a CPPN only generates a single pixel at a time. Uh, or you could uh, generate batches of pixels for memory constrained devices. But uh, in our paper, we're generating all of the pixels in parallel to speed up the, um, the, the computation. After you've generated all of the necessary pixels, you simply order the pixels into an n by n grid, and then you have your generated image. The CPPN has two very appealing properties that we'll get more into to later with some examples. The first one is infinite resolution. So simply by increasing the granularity of the coordinates that you're passing into the network, you can effectively control the resolution that you want to generate the image at. So uh, for, for example, a, a three by three uh, pixel image, the input coordinates could be minus one, zero, and one. But if you wanted to generate the same image at a resolution of 100 by 100 pixels, you would simply just increase the granularity of the coordinates. The other interesting property is infinite zoom. So by increasing or decreasing the absolute size of the input coordinates, you can effectively zoom in or zoom out of a generated image. So for a three by three pixel image, uh, you could simply just scale up the coordinates to be minus 10, zero, and, uh, and 10. Uh, 
The architecture that we introduce in our paper is called an information maximizing and pattern producing GAN, or INP GAN for short. This architecture is a combination of a CPPN, info GAN, and various neural network and GAN stabilization techniques. The info GAN approach that we are using here was introduced in uh, 2016, and it leverages concepts from information theory to achieve disentangled representations of the latent input. So in short, this allows us to use unlabeled data when training and instead have the model automatically learn semantic and meaningful labels for, for the training data. We've run multiple experiments using this architecture and we've trained many different models across multiple low resolution data sets MNIST, uh, Celeb A, WikiR, to name a few of them. And uh, we have conducted a great deal of experiments and they're described in detail in the paper itself. But uh, kind of the main experiments that, that we we'll, would we'll like to highlight today uh, is using different activation functions in the network and seeing what kind of effect that has on the generated images, varying the network depth and architecture, the exclusion or inclusion of the distance term as an input, uh, varying the weight initialization scheme. So uh, trying out uh, different schemes uh, for, for weight initialization. And uh, also some experiments uh, that compares a CPPN uh, versus more conventional generators, such as a convolutional neural network. When generating images at a resolution that is much greater than the training data, the activation functions that you have used in your network have a very distinct effect on the generated images. Uh, in our paper, we have mainly experimented with three different activation functions, uh, hyperbolic tangent, leaky ReLU, and the sine function. And what we observe is that when using the hyperbolic tangent uh, function as, as the activation function, we usually see a lot of smooth curves in the generated images. When we're using leaky ReLU, we uh, often see a more sharper and, uh, uh, and straight lines in the generated images. And using the sine function leads to repeating patterns in the generated images. So on the right here, you can see uh, a generated image where we've used uh, all of these three different activation functions. And you can see all of these repeating structures in the generated image. And we can attribute that to the use of the, the period, periodic uh, sign function. Um, these two models were both trained on the Celeb A dataset. Uh, this is a dataset that contains pictures of uh, celebrity faces. The image on the left was generated by a CPPN that was initialized with large weights, and it uses hyperbolic tangent function as the activation function and also includes the distance term as an input to the network. And as you can see on, on the image uh, to the left here, this model is able to generate uh, images with very smooth curves and kind of a blob pattern. And uh, we can attribute this to, to the use of the hyperbolic tangent function. And we also observe a circular pa pattern that is radiating outwards from the center of the image. And this is due to the inclusion of the distance term. So here we can kind of see the, the effect this this, the inclusion of this term has in practice. It, it gives this inherent bias towards symmetry in the images. And all of these properties are exact, exact, uh, exact are, are emphasized more due to the large initial weights that we have used. The image on the right was generated by a much deeper neural network where we've used both hyperbolic tangent uh, and also leaky ReLU. The weights were initialized to much smaller values and the model on the right much more closely approximates the, um, the training data that we have used but as you can see, the visual properties aren't as pronounced as the ones uh, that we have uh, from the model on the left. So there's a trade-off here between accuracy in terms of the training data and these pronounced visual properties. 
We've also conducted some experiments on a data set called Fashion Amnest. This data set contains various grayscale fashion items. Um, and we trained this model using unlabeled data. And since we're using uh, InfoGAN, the InfoGAN approach in our architecture, the model automatically learns meaningful semantic labels. So in the image you see here, each row is a different value of the set, one of the semantic labels that the model has learned. And each row contains a distinct type of object. You have one row for purses, one for pants, sweaters, etc. And there's also some variation between each image on a given row. And this is because each column uh, is generated using a different latent, um, latent vector set. So this allows for a variation in, in the generated images. Here's uh, a comparison between a conventional convolutional neural network generator on the left and a CPPN generator on the right. Uh, both of these were trained on Celeb A at 32 by 32 uh, resolution. And the visual quality uh, between these two models are, uh, are fairly similar at the, the original uh, training data resolution. We have also developed an interactive system uh, that anyone can use to interact with many of the different models that we have trained using our IMPGAN architecture. We have converted uh, many of these models to TensorFlow.js, and we've created a web application using uh, a JavaScript library called Vue.js. And we've set the application up on a dedicated domain called thispicturedoesnotexist.com. And this application runs entirely in the browser. It's entirely client-side. Uh, it's cross-platform, so it works on your smartphone, on your laptop, your stationary computer, et cetera. And all of the operations are being run locally in your browser. The application allows you to control most of the parameters and inputs to the model. And there are different kind of modes that you can use that gives you um, uh, different levels of control. So I'll do a quick demonstration of that now. So now I'm on this picture does not exist.com. Uh, the default mode is the auto mode, which is kind of a plug and play mode. Uh, and here I, I get some, uh, some freshly generated images uh, in a low resolution. And I can pick one of these and I can uh, ask the, the generator, the CPPN, to generate the same image at 300 by 300 pixels instead. I can uh, zoom out of the image. So this is the exact same image. I can zoom into the image. And you can do this. Uh, yeah, you can also increase the resolution more if you want to do that. Um, uh, you can mix images, so I can kind of create a, a mix between the two images I've selected here. And we have another mode uh, called video, which interpolates between different latent vectors. Um, uh, yeah, that, that corresponds to different images. So for example, here I can select this image and this image and this image. I can increase the resolution to 150 by 150 and generate video. So now it's actually generating an image for all of the interpolated vectors and then stitching it together as a movie and uh, serving it to you, in, you in, in real time in your browser. There's also a manual mode where you can, uh, where you have a lot more control over the inputs. You can uh, set the value of the semantic uh, labels, uh, and you can play around with some of, some of the more continuous semantic labels that we have. Many of them often correspond to rotation, etc. And we also have many different models here. Uh, we have uh, one for cars. This is from CFR10. We have uh, uh, MNIST, which many of you probably are familiar with, and paintings. Uh, I think this is a very interesting one because we used um, the sign function when training this. So this is trained on portrait paintings. Uh, and since we use the sign function, we can see these repeating patterns in the generated images. And if I zoom out now, 
you can much more clearly see a lot of repeating structures in the in the generated uh, generated images, uh, and all of this can be attributed to uh, to the uh, use of the sign function. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, different stuff you can play around with here, creating videos and mixing between images, etc. So feel free to to check that out. So to wrap things up, um, we have trained a comp compositional pattern producing network using generative adversarial networks. We have introduced an, imp, uh, an architecture called IMPGAN, information maximizing and pattern producing GAN. And this architecture allows us to train on unlabeled low resolution data and afterwards generate uh, very high resolution images with novel properties. And we've also developed an interactive web application that lets users explore the, the creative space of the models using image interpolation, mixing, uh, and other things. So that concludes the presentation. Thank you for listening. And if we have some time left, uh, me and my co-author would be happy to take some questions. If not, I hope I can see some of you at the poster session later today. Thank you for the presentation. Uh... Questions? I believe uh, Samuel Colt Colton uh, leave the comment uh, in the chat. Oh, yeah, so... uh, I just removed the screen sharing because I, I couldn't okay. find that. Okay. Chat. I don't believe it's a question, but yeah, I think at least you should uh, consider it. Meanwhile, uh, if anyone else has a question, please go ahead. Yeah, so Simon, I've, um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in, in releasing this. Uh, I haven't open sourced it, but it's mostly because I want to prepare the code a bit more before a public release, but um, I'm, I'm open to, to doing that. Okay. Yeah, so, um, uh, the question is uh, with regards to what happens if you train the model with high resolution, um, how does that affect results? So um, the higher resolution you use, the more unstable the training gets. So the largest resolution that we trained on that kind of successfully converged was 64 by 64 pixels. And if you go, uh, if you went much over that, then the training wouldn't really converge into something that closely approximated the, the training data. But there's been some recent work uh, where they have been able to use CPPNs to, um, to uh, use CPPNs together with high resolution training data or relatively high resolution training data. So, so there may be some, some improvements that can be incorporated into our model using some of these uh, new findings.